Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where the Commander Clash crew discusses commander-related topics, and today we are coming with our favorite budget tutors under $5-ish. Uh, joining me, as always, for this discussion is Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. How's it going, Seth? I'm doing great, Tomer. How are you today? Doing well, doing well. This is my wheelhouse. I'm super excited to talk budget. Um, next up, we got the Krim, a.k.a. the Asian Adventure, a.k.a. Krim. How's it going, Krim? Yo, what's up? Uh, it's morning, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> it's, it's a morning. <laughs> it's morning. I guess it yeah. is. It's oh, morning yeah. somewhere. Yep. <laughs> it's always morning in Krim, Krim land, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's always game yeah. time. Right. Krim land. Yeah. Right on. That's for sure. <laughs> well, wakey, wakey. Uh, next up, we got Phil, a.k.a. The Brewer's Kitchen. How's it going, Phil? Hey, oh, It's evening. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we got a span from, like, Pacific Coast to uh, all the way to Germany. It's uh, quite the, the time difference. There's a like, 10-hour disparity, right? No, uh, nine-hour disparity. Nine or eight, yeah. Yeah. Woof. Yeah, look at us. <laughs> but soon we'll be united for the first time in Vegas. Ooh, I'm very excited great. for that. Um, but yeah, uh, before we jump into the cards, though, two things you can do to support the channel. First, um, you can head on over to uh, our store, uh, mtggoldfishmerch.com, and you can purchase all the deck sleeve deck boxes, uh, t-shirts, and so much more over at mtggoldfish.com. And the other way you can support the channel is you can like and subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast be it iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you're listening, give it a whole like and subscribe, whatever the equivalent is over there. All right, let's start the list. And we're going to start with Seth. What is a tutor that you consider very good under $5-ish? Uh, so this tutor is very, very good. And that is Solve the Equation. Solve the Equation, two in a blue sorcery, search your library for instant or sorcery, reveal it and put it into your hand. It is currently around two bucks, two dollars and twenty cents. If you look on EDH rec, Tons of people play Mystical Tutor. Mystical Tutor is like 20 plus dollars. It's really expensive. And I would argue that Solve the Equation is very close to as good as Mystical Tutor. Mystical Tutor, of course, is only one mana. And it's an instant, but it puts the card on top of your deck. So you got to have another way to draw that card. Solve the Equation, you pay a little bit of a tax mana-wise. But you're putting whatever instant or source you need directly into your hand, which is super, super powerful. So if you're playing any sort of like Spell Slinger deck or Spell-based combo deck, this is a great way to find your big combo piece, whatever you're missing, that is incredibly cheap because it's fairly recently printed and it uncommon and this is one that i would say like hopefully they just keep reprinting it a bunch but otherwise i would probably snag some copies now because trick savings like about to rotate from standard and getting old and they don't reprint this it is like eight percent of decks on eda track i think it'll start like slowly climbing up in price as more people realize just how good of a budget tutor this actually is in commander yeah i think this, is, this card is like an auto include in most spell slinger decks and I guess the the difference between Mystical Tutor and Solved Equation is mostly like the mana. Like Mystical Tutor is one, this is three. But Mystical Tutor basically puts you down a card because it just puts the top card on top of your library. This puts it, this replaces itself with the card. And depending on what you need, like sometimes you really need a board wipe, right? And not every deck is going to be running like five or six board wipes, like the the Crim Philosophy. Even though maybe they should, maybe they should. Uh, but like you know, solve the equation into a blasphemous act and cast blasphemous act for like one mana is very clutch. And sometimes you can't wait that extra turn like Mystical Tutor requires. And even getting a Supreme Verdict or a Toxic Deluge, like six or seven mana, isn't unreasonable in the mid game in Commander. Like everyone's ramping. Like yeah, three mana is a tax. I'm not denying that you got to pay some extra to get the spell that you need, but it's not a prohibitive, a prohibitively high tax. It's going to keep you from doing what you want to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, All right. Well, hmm? yeah. Like the card, the card's sweet. Uh, I thoroughly love it. And anything that's going to be like in in Strixhaven is actually now getting more expensive than I thought it would be. Uh, solve the equation at two dollars. I didn't know that. Wow, that's it. Actually, went up a lot. <laughs> I, yeah, it was even cheaper. It was like a bulk uncommon for a while when it was first printed. Oh, right. So. I mean, yeah, but I mean, it, it is, is it uncommon. Is yeah. Like with the, do you think there's gonna be a creature version of this? Because technically, the instant and sorcery version should be 
better even since it's like if you if you play a spell slinger deck you'd way rather have a spell that caught tutors a spell and then a creature deck i guess you'd want a creature that searches for a creature so would solve the equations for creatures just be worse we haven't I seen mean... it Wait, solve the equation that finds a creature or that on finds a creature? a creature. Oh, that is a creature on ATB. Ooh, please, three but, mana, search your library for a creature, I put mean, it into your hand. We have, yeah, we we have like Eladrami's call, which is in two colors, but that's like two mana, grab a creature, put it in your hand. So I feel like we have enough like similar versions that get creatures. So it might be what a little bit cheaper though. It, yeah, like yeah. as a budget option. Obviously, there's better things, but yeah. I think it's pretty safe to do this with creatures. I mean, I mean, they already have better versions of, like, Green Sun Zenith, Court of Calling, Finale of Devastation. So yeah, this, three this, mana, you, put it in your hand, is, like, fine. That would be perfectly fine. You also fine. have, like, the creature types. The ones that specifically get creature types that are pretty good. Yeah. So, I think it would be a fine inclusion. Like, maybe... I guess the only only reason not to is, like, you don't want dex, creature decks to be too consistent, and they already have a lot of tutors. But, like, I think power-wise, it seems fine in a vacuum. But, yeah. All right, moving on. Phil, what do you got for us as a so, uh, nice tutor? Yeah, so usually I don't play tutors that just search for cards. But, and I got to have a little bit of a caveat here to my almost my whole list. So we said <laughs> below $5. And um, if you take the cheapest price to the cards I'm listing here, it's below $5. So... My pick for probably best budget tutor with this budget is Dark Petition. It's a five mana search for a card, any card. And if you have spell mastery, you get three or two mana back. You get three back. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I don't play the cards. I don't play tutors that tutor for specific, just any card. But this one should be close to the best one if we want to spend five dollars or well, very slightly less, less, or maybe a bit more, depending on where you get it, but that's not my problem. <laughs> so Dark Petition is just, it's pretty much just search for any card, and usually you should get the mana back, so it's two mana tutor, but only later in the game. It's just pretty good. I think just tutors are all mostly boring if they search for anything, but if you want to do it, that's a good card to do it. Dark Petition, like, yeah. so the idea is it's going to be Demonic Tutor with some, like, hoops that you jump through, like, if you can use the mana right away, and if you can get up to five mana to start, but Demonic Tutor is super expensive, so if you're going to get a $5-ish version of it, you're going to take some sort of hit power level-wise, so I don't think it's anywhere near Demonic Tutor just because of the, like, hoops you got to jump through, but as far as, like, unconditional tutors that are in the $5 price range, you can't do a whole lot better than Dark Petition. Like, a lot of times it works out exactly how you want to, where you're like, I need a Wrath, I cast this, I get Toxic Deluge, I use the three mana, I cast the Toxic toxic Deluge with that mana, and you're super happy. That would be exactly the same as if you tutored up the Toxic Deluge with Demonic Tutor. Like, literally 100% the same. So, in a lot of situations, it plays like a much more expensive uh, tutor with how you get that mana back from Spell Mastery. And it's not like spell mastery is that hard to get. Two you just spells. Two instances That's sorcerers. nothing. Two. Yeah, it's the setups. You don't even need to be in spell splinger really. Like you just need to have like I don't know ten more, ten or more. Yeah, if in you're your... not in specific spell slinger, then you really gotta wait for this though. Like if you play yeah. Cedh, I don't. Do they play dark petition just as an additional? Be- because on turn two, you can't really do this unless you ramp. Eh, I guess if you play rituals to get this much mana. This early, mm-hmm. I guess, at this point, you do have Spell Mastery. But it is it is very clunky in the first turns. But in casual kitchen table, you just wait until turn 9 or something when you really need a card. That's when Dark Petition is pretty much Demonic Tutor. Yeah. And, I mean, you have a lot of, like, ramp spells that are instant or sorceries. You got cheap cantrips that are instant or sorceries. So, in my experience, like... By the time you get to five mana when you can cast this, a lot of decks you're just accidentally going to have Spell Mastery turned on by the by around that time in the game anyway. I feel like Krim has played this quite a few I have. times on Commander Clash, yeah. I have. This card is great. Uh, I, I, I actually think that it's oftentimes the same, as Seth has mentioned, as a Demonic Tutor. It doesn't 
I love the burst in mana there that that comes back with it. So, uh, and it's super cheap. Well, it was super cheap. Now it's like five bucks. Eh. Relatively, I mean, demonic like it basically. If you get spell mastery, it's like a clunkier demonic tutor, right? Yeah, but like demonic tutor is. Uh, uh, let's see cheapest. Let's see cheapest. Uh, Thirty nine dollars. <laughs> so. <laughs> I mean, okay. five dollars is much more reasonable. It, like, right. if, if we're talking budget on the realm of budget, I think it's it's pretty pretty on the line there. So, yeah. Um, but speaking about black tutors, uh, Krim, what do you got for us as a spicy first pick? Uh, so for a while, I've advocated for this card. So if you've seen mm. me talk about it, you you were not surprised. But it's night dealings, two black black. Yeah. It's an enchantment from Kamigawa. Whenever a creature you can uh, you control deals <laughs> damage to another player, put that many counters on night dealings. Then pay two black black, remove X theft counters from night dealings, search your library for a non-land card with converted mana cost X, uh, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. I often play Little Blue Men. Uh, they're always usually <laughs> uh, eva- like evasive. So this roguelike, you could say, yeah, they they're very roguelike, and they usually have a lot of spirit, you know, or or maybe yeah. sometimes they're they're very awesome to like hit people with, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. So like the whole point is, it's easy for a little like low to the ground tempo deck to just kind of just get in there and connect, and over time, like this, it's weird because this card on paper, when you look at it, reads pretty poorly. You're like, okay. Well, why would I want to play that, right? Well, first off, A, it's budget. And two, over time, like, oh, like it kind of slides under the threat radar. Uh, if people like are like, okay, well, whatever, you know, like I, I can remove that or something better, right? Usually when it comes mm-hmm. to enchantments. So it's not like uh, offensive enough to where the table wants to remove it immediately because you've got to pay four mana to like activate it again. But it's kind of awesome to just have this like enchantment that sits around uh that allows me to just keep tutoring over and over and over and over until eventually it, people will deal with it and it's great when you have small little evasive creatures flyers anything at all um i will also say that it's good with evasive creatures but it does say uh any damage it doesn't say specifically True. uh combat damage so if you have any ways if you have like a deck um that can deal damage to each opponent like very efficiently like i'm thinking sort of like a Rakdos or a riot deck or a florian those are the type of decks where like they have lots of those pingers where it's just like deal yep. tap deal one damage to each opponent nettle cyst um, on the board yeah like nettle cyst um those will get a lot better with night dealings too because one tap deal one damage to each opponent is now going to net you three counters and you don't even need to try and get out of agent or anything uh like yeah i'm sorry it's a source deals damage yeah. Yeah. yeah this this card is so 20 years ago for me it's like <laughs> you pay the, i saw you heard pain you pay the diabolic tutor cost just to cast it and then you have to damage your opponents and then your reward is you get to cast diabolic tutor again if you want to to me it just feels like if they printed this card today like it would either be much cheaper to get on the battlefield and then you would tutor for diabolic tutor ray or it would be much cheaper to do the diabolic tutor and get some sort of discount like oh you do all this work and you get to maybe demonic tutor when you remove the counters or something it just feels like I could see where it's going with rogues or attacking decks, but even in that scenario, to me, it just looks like a lot of mana to tutor up a single card. Like, your first tutor is eight cards, and you got to do deal some amount of damage in between to be able to even make that work. Have you ever, like, I'm telling you, this feels, this thing is amazing <laughs> if you play it in, like, a rogue deck and stuff like that. Like, I... It's so good because first off, a you're just not gonna let them resolve whatever they're trying to do anyway. So like the thing, <laughs> so the point here, I I guess the difference here is I back this up with just constant like if I'm able to just sit there with cheap little threats and then just back it up with a bunch of counter spells, like and then whenever I need to, I can just remove the yeah, counters. Sure. Like it, it's pretty sweet. You can, like, instant speed, get a counter or something. Like, if you have enough, you have to have a lot of counters and a lot of mana. But if you have, like, six mana and enough counters, you remove some counters, pay for it, get a counter, spell or a mana drain, and cast it. So, 
I could see it working but, really well without Crim. And I, I think I figured it out. It's an instant speed tutor that puts the card in your hand. So it works very well for exactly Crim's exactly. play style. Exactly. That literally solves like any any uh, any card suggestion <laughs> from, from Crim. It's like, can I play this in draw go? <laughs> yes? Okay. It's no, great. I can't. No, I can't because I, I need to deal damage. Yeah. I need to deal damage. Yeah, yeah but on, your no. rogues is basically draw go. Like, oh, you play a rogue, you, you always have to have your counter magic up, man up. So you play like a one drop rogues. on turn three, <laughs> and you'll have your counter spell mana up or mana drain. And then I, you play night dealings on turn seven. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will admit that that is correct, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do see it gets better. Like I think it, I think it plays better than it looks. Like eight mana to, to diabolic tutor is obviously a bad rate, but right. if you could just drop it early, uh, accrue those those things, and then you can instant speed diabolic tutor. That's the main difference. If it was sorcery speed, I'd be like, this is trash. But if right. you are actually playing a deck where you're going to utilize that mana for something, and then if you don't need to utilize that something, then you just spend four and you tutor up whatever you need, I think it gets a lot better. What's the average mana value you get with this card? Like, I, I, If you just remove two counters to get a mana drain, that seems amazing at instant speed. But you can't really get a like a decree of pain or something. You have to connect with seven counters eight creatures before you can get this no well, uh, it, it scales with damage so if you hit oh, it's with just an eight, damage yeah, yeah. whenever Ooh, whenever source you control deals that. damage to another player put that many Ooh, theft counters on 19 so if you yeah. have a hit with an eight eight you get eight theft counters. i played with this card a lot like back in the day too and it does look it does look bad but yeah. i yeah. swear it yeah, does it, it plays seems... a lot better than <laughs> it, it looks because That's you do accrue saying. those theft counters fast you do you really do and then, and then, yeah, four mana instant speed tutor up basically whatever. Like you can get eight theft counters pretty easily on this. I know, I know. It I'm looks still not so. It, it, <laughs> it looks, it it looks like, bad on paper. I I totally agree. It looks bad, but I so hair off by it that it, it is good. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm on I'm, I'm on I'm on team crew with this one. Trust me. It's yeah. actually not bad. It does look bad, though. I, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most contentious one, I think. Leave a comment if you believe that this night deal is actually not bad, or if you're you on team. You just have to believe. Seth, come on, yeah. Just believe. Bag just me up, believe. YouTube. Bag me up. <laughs> <laughs> just like Fade Away looks, is actually better than it looks oh, like. Come on. <laughs> I was almost with you, Tomer. Do you, still, do you still want Tomer on your team, Krim, after that comment? <laughs> it is does he hurt my the, case. The right. It hurts team. my case a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what if, what if I win you all over with my first pick? Mm -hmm. So, I like, I like my tutors to either be instant speed or very mana efficient. Those are generally the ones that I'm looking for. Um, for my, my, my top ones, or, or I'll just like really flexible. And this is one of my favorites, uh, that recently got reprinted. Um, this is Bring to Light. Uh, it was a couple dollars before, but thankfully it got reprinted in Double Masters as a rare, which actually helped drop the price quite a lot. Um, this says, uh, it's a, a five mana. A uh, three green and blue sorcery. Uh, but you generally want to be casting it with a lot more uh, different colored mana than that. It says converge. Search your library for a creature, instant, or sorcery card with mana value less than or equal to the number of colors of mana spent to cast a spell. Exile that card, then shuffle. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. So you can cast this for just three, uh, three generic um, green and blue, and you can find a two drop. Uh, creature instant or sorcery or less or you can pay five mana of one of each color wooberg and you can get a five mana instant uh sorcery or creature card put it directly onto the battlefield and what i really like about this is it's just super mana efficient like you can pay five mana and you can grab any five drop instant or sorcery and just put it directly into play not hand so it's like a huge mana discount in terms of like uh the tutoring too like you could think of the tutor basically costing zero and just finding any creature instant sorcery just plopping it directly into play um so yeah Bring the Light's great. I, the only thing I is, do like Bring the Light. you kind of got to be five color, right? Like because of how convert. Maybe you could say four, four color, like maybe. But really, like four. but how many four color decks are there? Like I wouldn't play this in a three color deck. If you happen this to be the rare four color deck, then that's fine. Five color, I think this is 
like yeah. a staple. Like I would jam this in pretty much any five color deck and expect that I'm going to get enough value out of it because of the reasons you said, like you're kind of paying zero. If you have all five colors and you're getting a five drop, you're putting a five mana value thing into play. So the tutor is not costing you anything at all. So that's the only downside is like, I think you really got to be a five color deck to want this, but in a five color deck, this is like a great tutor. Does it still work with cards like Valky so you can play Tybalt for free if you get two mana value? I mean, that's mm. four color already, but... Yeah, you're you can only colors, play the front side, right? They they changed I, they the rule. Changed it. You used to be able to do that, but now now you cannot get the castle Boring. backside of it anymore. You can get, like, no mana value cards, right? If you want to get a, a zero mana crashing footfalls or restore balance or something, that, that Ooh, works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, five. yeah, you could... Ancestral Visions or whatever. Ancestral Visions for five well, mana. Well, Inevitable five Betrayal mana. is pretty sick. Like, I don't know. You get your yeah. glimpse of whatever the, the thingy. That, there's, like, some powerful zero drop suspend things. But, like, I think even ignoring those, like, I usually just put this in. Yeah, I'll put this in any five-color deck pretty much. Yeah. Like, there's going to be something. It doesn't grab, in, it doesn't get enchantments. I think that's, like, the big or artifacts, whiff. And but... it doesn't get Planeswalkers. Yeah, but like, there's always going to be an instant a sorcerer or a creature that you can get. So yeah, grab your mole drifter. <laughs> Even that's worth it every <laughs> time. <laughs> Hopefully, you get better than that. <laughs> what is mole better drifter. than a mole drifter, Tomer? <laughs> <laughs> Cloud blazer. I don't know. Uh, when I activate my night life. dealings, that's what I'm tutoring up. <laughs> <laughs> the card's good. It's good. I swear. The card is good though. Like. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so all right, so your Mr. I have a legitimately good tutor for you because this right. guy. So I agree with I agree with Tomer that when it comes to tutors, I either want efficiency or flexibility. Those are kind of like the two things you look for. Uh, Primal Command is my next choice, and Primal Command I like because it does way more than just tutor. It's a five mana green sorcery. It's part of the cryptic command cycle, actually. It's a green number of that cycle. You get to do two, two of four options. Target player gains seven life. Meh, not the most helpful, but sometimes that could be good. Target, uh, Put target non-creature permanent on the top of its owner's library. So a little bit of a removal. Target player shuffles his or her graveyard into her library, which is graveyard hate, or search your library for a creature card, reveal it, put it in your hand, and then shuffle. So five mana is a lot to tutor up a creature. We know that you can tutor up a creature for two mana, Eladrami's Call, uh, uh, Demonic Tutor. There's tons of ways to get uh, creatures for cheaper. What I like about Primal Command is it can be whatever creature I need when I need it to be a creature, but it can also be Graveyard Hate, which is something we always talk about people needing to play more of in Commander. It can also permanently remove any non-creature permanent, a land, a planeswalker, an artifact, or enchantment, because you can put it on top of your opponent's library and then force them to shuffle their graveyard in so it gets rid of that permanent forever. So for me, the flexibility of Primal Command is the big calling card here. It doesn't do anything super well, but it does so many little things good enough that I like to play to my green decks. And it's green, so you can ramp five mana is like, as Krim would say, five mana and green is what? Like two mana in another color or something, because you have yeah. so much rampant <laughs> green that the, the mana gust isn't really that big of a deal. It, it really is. Just This card is fun. Uh, I, I love playing this, but probably from LD decks and 60 card formats. <laughs> Uh, but but yeah, like this card is pretty sweet in Commander, and it, for a while it used to come in precons, right? It was in yeah, a it's few been, precons. I it's been reprinted a ton, so it's it's actually super uh, super cheap at this point because Wizards just keeps reprinting. It's been in precons, it's been in master sets, so yeah. And Strixhaven, yeah, the Mystical Archive. <sighs> I don't know if I, I said the price. It's under card. it's under a dollar. It's under under a buck. Yeah, nice. I've never played this card. I don't think. I, mean, I know, I know. It. Seth has played it yeah. a bunch. You got to be a yeah, sixty you, card formats. As well. You got to be like a if creature. You, get, yeah. you got to be a creature deck. It works especially well with like elves, druids, the big mana green tribes. It can make lots of mana, and then you can snag whatever creature you need that's gonna get your crater hook for whatever. And you have so much mana, you really don't care that it's not like super efficient. And then you get all that extra upside of oh, I'm the low person and I was the arch enemy, so I gained seven life to get out of the danger zone or deal with a graveyard or whatever. 
or do you just get a eternal witness and cast it again if you i mean if you're in mono run green, it back run it back and then you get, you get a there, timeless kill witness me. and do it again yeah. so let's get the crater hopefully <laughs> kill me <laughs> then you get a clone and copy the eternal <laughs> witness and then a resto and blanket and yep it's a good time Phil knows. It's an army of two ones. <laughs> it doesn't win, but it, boy, does it annoy people. Oh, I would die. <laughs> it's so cool if you lock people in constructed formats like 1v1. It's actually very good if you top their lands and get eternal witnesses. I don't care if they are two ones. They do the job eventually. In one I think I think Kriv is yeah, turning me into an anti-grid player. <laughs> <laughs> I, every every time Seth talks about or Seth and Phil talk about looping Eternal Witnesses oh, and locking people out of the oh. game while they continue to loop, I always think like Krim was right all along. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, needs, this needs to be punished. You can tell I've been on the opposite side of what Seth <laughs> and, and Phil are talking about. <laughs> but, uh, I think that most of the YouTube audience would rather be on Team Value than a uh, Team Night Dealings over there. So. <laughs> Uh, that, that that's this. synonymous. That's I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Night, night dealings is value, though. Exactly. You tutor and then you tutor again and you tutor again. If you're tutoring you a tutor primal again. command with it, an eternal witness, then then I am on board. Yeah. Oh, God. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> All right. Speaking about green, Phil, yep. you're on brand. I see. What do you got for us next? Yeah, so this is a card I actually try to play in almost every green deck. It's not the best, but it's insanely fun. It's Vivian Monster's Advocate. It's a planeswalker, not really what you would expect from a tutor. And the tutoring is uh, admittedly pretty uh, hoop jumpy. It's, let me just explain the card real quick. Three mana, Vivian Planeswalker, three loyalty. You may look at the top card Five of the library. Vivian. Oh, yeah, hopes I just read the colorless. That would be insane. No, no, <laughs> five mana, pretty good. three loyalty, pretty Maybe fair. Missile level. Yeah, <laughs> probably better. Uh, you may look at the top card of your library at any time, and you may cast creatures from the top of your library. Uh, then you can plus her to create a beast with an ability counter, but the cool ability that you have to most of the time untap with her for is minus two. When you cast your next creature spell this turn, Search your library for a creature with lesser converted mana cost, put that on the battlefield, then shuffle. So this, yeah, it's a lot of hoops to jump through. You have to cast like a four drop and then get any three drop. But this, it feels so interactive. Usually with uh, tutors, it's like, oh, I need this card. Well, I got the card that gets exactly this card. And with this, you have to be a little more careful on what you play what you search out and it's not like easy mode you have to jump through hoops but then it, you can get some pretty cool stuff with it like if you play a five drop you can get a four drop out of your deck and maybe get a spark double copy vivian right away if you have more mana you can minus the other vivian but that's some value or if you the creature enters before the other creature the one that you cast so you can play a four drop get a risen reef like how about that fort of is an Omnath or something? Then the Risen Reef <laughs> enters the battlefield, and then this triggers off the creature you originally cast. Oh, so much value, so much fun, and different things to do. Not just one card that gets another card, but a whole big text box. And What's, a, it's what's the price on this one, by the way? Oh, I don't know if you mentioned. <clears throat> yeah, so this one is about... Four ninety nine. <laughs> you get uh -huh. a good present. That's, that's uh, five bucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe get them in in the European market. Then all of the prices are closer to actual below five. But uh, as of the time of this recording, you can probably get a copy for four ninety nine. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> I I will say Vivian's a cool card. Board. I'm just always skeptical of Planeswalkers because I feel like they die yeah. so much. So you got a little bit of the consistency mm. issue. But it does remind me of like another green pseudo tutor that's one of my favorites and is also budget friendly, which is Wild Pair. Uh, Wild Pair is just like such a cool card. It's a six man enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if you cast it, you get to search for a creature with the same total power and toughness. So add up the power and toughness, and you get a creature that has the same. So if you cast a two two, then you can get something that's a three one or a one three or whatever. So uh, I like 
I, as Phil was saying, I tend to shy away from just playing generic tutors more than like one per deck, but the tutors that actually have a little bit more of a restriction around them and make you think about like what cards you're casting, what cards are in your deck, I find those a lot more fun to play too. So I'm not fully on the Vivian Monsters Advocate train just because mm. I feel like I'm going to play it and it's going to die, but I, I do like that style of tutor, even if it's not as powerful as a demonic tutor or whatever. I'm on team Phil for this one because... The, I agree the planeswalkers are a little bit harder to uh, to survive because they always have a target on them. Like you're, they people default attacking them, and you have to protect against three opponents instead of uh, just one. But um, when Vivian goes onto the battlefield, you can immediately plus one her. She goes to foil loyalty, and most importantly, you can you can you make a three three beast token that can have reach for example if there's up against you're up against flyers so she does have a little bit of self-protection too you're going to be putting her in a green folk er, in a creature focus deck because her abilities are all focused on creatures so you're going to naturally just have more blockers as well when you're being when you're going to be casting vivian and also I, what i really like about her is that she's not just a tutor she also allows you to generate card advantage by casting creature spells off the top of your library. So she's kind of like an Oracle Muldaian kind of in that sense, where Oracle Muldaian can let you play lands off the top of your library. This one lets you play creatures off the top of your library. So you're putting Vivian in a creature-heavy deck. You're going to be getting card advantage off her ability. And you get to tutor. And since you are in a creature-focused deck, her pl- her own protection plus the other creatures you have on the battlefield are probably going to make it more likely that you get to untap and then negative to her and get that value i think i mean if you untap with me it's very good and the abilities kind of like work with each other because if you play creatures off the top of your deck and you you can like down tick and cast a creature off your top can uh, tutor up another one or use that ability to shuffle your library if you fizzle and get too many lands on top of your deck cast a creature from your hand to get the shuffle and keep going off the top of your deck so if you untap with it it's certainly a really good time i just how often do you untap with it? That's my concern. I feel like if I played it, I would just like play it and like make a beast, and then you all would murder it, and I'd be very sad. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm usually the... how I imagine it going because of Vivian having such low loyalty and a three mm. three reach, whatever you want to call it, right? Whatever ability you want to attach it to uh, or, or to, it won't be enough to stop mm. Vivian from dying. So I, Vivian is one of those cards where I, I, I do like what she has in a one v one format. Uh, but like, yeah, in a multiplayer, it's so rough to keep her. I I will admit though, the most fun from this card and any card like her though, this includes like Sphinx of Jawars, Isle, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is that I just will purposely annoy people by looking at the top of my card whenever, however, much, and very <laughs> obviously like, hold on, okay, cool, and I'll I'll yeah, yeah. rapidly flip the top of my deck up and down, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just to look. I know I can't play it. If it, if I haven't played it yet, I'll never play it. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, if I mana, it is a little bit. Like, the fact that you can't get her negative two immediately, and you can't probably cast that many creatures off the top on the first turn, I don't know. I it's- still like her, though. The- the problem is it's actually good enough for people to want to kill. I think, like, that's the problem. Yeah. If you have five mana and you cast this, it's a strong enough looking card. Because I'm going to be thinking, wow, if you untap with this, how many creatures could you possibly, you know, cast off the top of your deck? How much card advantage could you be generating? So I would be, like, scared enough that I would probably put some effort into trying to not let you untap with it. On the other hand, if you can get up to, like, ten mana or something and play this in the late game and do stuff right away, then it's, like, super powerful. You're also, it's also uh, of note that if you're in green, you're most likely going to be dropping this. Like, you, if you have Vivian on, like, turn three, you could probably drop Vivian down on turn three. Like, turn one, Mana Dork or Wild Growth or whatever effect. And then turn two, another ramp card of any kind. And, and then, then it might three, you got Vivian. And then it might, it might live. Like, that might be fast enough yeah. that no one will have enough creatures to actually attack it down. And then you're going to have a good time. Yeah. I don't know. She's a little inconsistent. I'll, I'll grant it, but I, I would jam this. Uh, I, I think I'll start jamming this in my green decks. For sure. All right. We'll move on. Krim, what's number two on your list? Uh, Number two is another, well, essentially another way to tutor at instant speed. And matter of fact, it even gets instants and sorceries, or just instant, sorry. Uh, it is Mystical Teachings. Uh, it's a three and a blue. It's search your library for an instant card or card with flash, reveal it and put it into your hand. Uh, and then it also has flashback for five and a black mana. So 
I love this because, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, right? I, I get to do it at instant speed, and I can do it again at a later point. Uh, say the first one doesn't resolve, or say, I don't know, it gets thrown away somehow, right? Uh, you get to do it again with flashback. So this is just a powerful way to get instants, and and the fact that it can get flash creatures is pretty major because you're able to go get like a Gear Hulk, Snapcaster, Teferi, or, or any of those, whatever you need, whenever. Uh, and and it's I think it's well well costed. I mean, yeah, I I did play teachings in standard, so I guess naturally I have a little bit of an affinity for this card. But I do think that it is just a good card, and it's twenty cents or twenty five cents. Can't get much cheaper than that. <laughs> yeah, this is a yeah. cheap oh. one. There, there's uh, even cheaper time, than that? It, I'm always surprised on the amount of cards this can get. Like, having Flash there is such a yeah. crazy upgrade. Like, it just gets something for every situation. I mean, at this point, we have Planeswalkers with Flash, so right, that's a pretty mm -hmm. good card. And it's going to get better the more Flash cards are going to get printed. So it's it, so nice being able to get like a wandering uh, yeah. emperor with that in like my Amanatu deck and et cetera, et cetera. So Grim, do you play this in like flash decks or do you just play this in control decks too? I see like in flash decks, it's probably like insane in like a Drago style deck. Is this good enough? Even though it's like a little bit inefficient, is it still like, yeah, I get to tutor twice, even though it's kind of expensive. Is it still worth it? Or is it just for flash decks really? It, I, I would play this in a control deck, and I wouldn't say that every control deck needs this, but I would say that if it's draw go, it's pretty solid, right? Being able to get anything at instant speed, that's the big appeal here, right? Like, it's, again, just instant speed, get any instant spell or flash. I mean, that's, you can get, all, that's all I care about. You can get the counter spell. You can get a removal right. spell. Like, no matter what, like, I always, whenever I've had a uh, teachings in my hand, you just feel safe. If you got enough mana to yeah. cast stuff, you just always feel real safe because you're like, no matter what anyone could possibly do to me, I can use teachings to get something that'll answer that. So it really is good at making sure nothing goes horribly wrong as long as you have enough mana to cast it and whatever you tutor up with it. Well, well, it's also nice because the beauty is, I think, when you're thinking, and the reason why I do anything instant speed and prefer instant speed isn't just draw go. It's because the option of doing anything on someone else's turn is way better. You get more information uh, as opposed mm -hmm. to like doing it on your turn, right? Pretty basic knowledge, but that is something that I hold highly uh, when it comes to like uh, like playing my cards. And so having the ability to tutor an instant speed meaning means that like I don't have to cast it on the turn right like you're thinking oh I tutor it and cast it all in one go but the beauty is I can set up a few turns before so because I can just do it at the end of your turn now it's my turn you know do what I want yeah I like this a lot for Drago and I also played it in a constructive 1v1 popper it used to be you cast teachings and then you get another teachings mm -hmm. and then you keep going and going and going <laughs> And then you just like out value the player, but yeah, Commander, I'll run in Drago. I will run in Drago. It's it's absolutely lovely, but I don't know. Outside of Drago, I don't really want to be spending four mana to tutor up a card, and then I don't know because it's, it's a big investment. I don't know. I would For four pay mana. that investment though if it's instant speed with flashback. Like yeah, you pay a little bit more than you probably want, would like compared to like mystical team. yeah. Tutor or whatever, I just want right? to vomit out I my mean, hands and then keep going and well, then say that, your go and then I just like read a book or something. That, that's not draw go. Hold on, wait a minute. Vomit. <laughs> I know, I know. Head. In draw go, I love it, but like outside of draw go, if I'm just playing like a just like a regular deck, I I want to tap out on my turn. I just want to vomit <laughs> out six. as much as possible. <laughs> yeah, vomit yeah. out as much as possible. Make as much money as possible. Draw as many cards as possible and then just pass. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I mean, it requires my mentality a doesn't work there. Deck. It's, yeah. it's a specific deck, right? But and also in, just like rogues and stuff, like it's just good. sure, yeah, because like rogues have flash and and whatnot, yeah. right? But like that's that's great. That's why the flash is so good because you get to yeah. grab anything, and you can also get once again to fairy and then just lock a table out, right? Like it's so good. <laughs> oh. <sighs> it curves and, out perfectly, fair. and you get to do it twice. Like the flashback is huge. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah. very easy to forget about. Like there there's one hanging out in the graveyard, and then get wrecked by it later in the game when you flash it back. So, right, yeah. Instant instant speed tutors are a premium. That's why vampiric tutor and stuff is so good. Um, yeah, that costs one mana and it's super flexible, but it does put you down a card. This one does not. It replaces itself. Or I mean, it's card advantage, I guess, if you have the six mana to flash it back, which Drago will be able to do eventually. So it's pretty solid. 
All right. I'm going to move on. Because Phil's is a cheaty face, I wanted to cheat a little bit, too. With my favorite tutor, they, oh, oh boy. I was going to say it's, like, super uh, underrated, and I would be like, this is my the, the most underrated tutor of all time. Uh, but apparently it caught on to you in other formats. Um, this is Wargate. This is a sorcery, uh, X, green, white, and blue, uh, sorcery, search your library for a permanent card with converted mana cost or mana value X or less, put it onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. So if you, uh, just play green, white, and blue, then you can just search your library for a permanent card with mana value zero or less. So you can get... Basically, it says uh, suture library for any, you know, any land and put directly onto the battlefield for three mana. It's like a super, super rampant growth. You get, get any land and put it directly onto the battlefield. That there's your field of the dead or whatever. Um, and then if you pay more mana than that, um, you get more more access to more permanents. So I usually just cast it for like three mana, get whatever land, uh, utility land I super need. Or like a zero drop, like a, a Moxon or whatever. But then if you have more mana, you pay six mana, get a, a three drop or something like that. It's super flexible. It, it's four eighty nine mm-hmm. on TCG <laughs> market price. It, it's five eighty five. I don't know if you looked at the, the prices. Like so this ah. this card used to be like really cheap. And then there's a modern yeah. deck that plays it now and it spiked up to like Fifty dollars back in April. It was yeah, like he's... super expensive, and it's been trending down. So I think it'll get back under under five dollars. Uh, hopefully, it was like three dollars forever. Yeah. It was like forever a three dollar ish card, and then some deck had to ruin the fun. I got so excited. I mean, what um, it, it's Which part deck? of the. Go there's what? a. Ta- Tashmi, Tashimi, whatever that Kamigawa Mishi. legend is. There's an infinite combo with it that involves getting a Lotus Bloom with Wargate, and then you can infinitely loop the the Lotus Bloom from a graveyard with Tamishi and make infinite mana, and then you cultivator classes to win. But the thing I like about Wargate is three mana to get a non basic land is pretty good. Like if you think about ramp and commander, two mana usually gets you a basic land or a dual land. Three mana to get your Urborg or get your field to the dead or whatever like ridiculous land you want that's not a bad price like that's pretty efficient especially going directly onto the battlefield and then you get the flexibility in the late game that it can be getting any permanent in your deck like it's expensive if you're going to get a six drop or an eight drop that's a late game play but that uh, that's built in like you're going to turn a witness it back to your hand after getting the land early and get something bigger later what i want to ask you though tomer is what do you think about Rocco? I didn't see Rocco on any of our lists. And Rocco's kind of similar. It's like three mana and X. You tutor for a creature with mana value X or less. And it's <laughs> it's on a body. Like So you don't get to do the panel, land right? shenanigans. But yeah. do you think Rocco should be somewhere on our list? Because you can get Dryad Arbor. And Dryad Arbor is like a land. So you can still kind of do the ramp shenanigans. Like is it? It's actually really good. And it's really cheap. And also, like, it's an ETB. It's on a creature, so you could, like, yeah. bounce it back. I played a Rocco deck. It was Elf Ball, and I had uh, a Saber Sabertooth. Yeah. You crushed us, yeah. You have to crush us. I wanted to do the fa- <laughs> Halo Fountain. It, it didn't pan out. Um, but you could, like, bounce it back to your hand and recast it and stuff. So that card is gas. Oh, this is an Elf. So you can do, like, what's what's an Elf that's, like, it's a... Wirewood symbiote or something. Oh, you can, that like, you can pick up. Return. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you can keep yeah, using so it. Like, yeah, and that card's like yeah, twenty cents or something yeah. like that. I don't know. Maybe it's because there's like so much, so many sets that are coming out these these days. Yeah, that we're just like we can't even like properly comprehend cards as they come out anymore. I <laughs> actually, yeah, that card's great. Yeah, I play Rocco as a specifically just hey, this seems good, and I have the card because I opened it. I play it and. Omnath, which doesn't make any sense, but it gets Risen Reef. <laughs> it's, it's like, every, it's just, every, I don't like... Of course uh, it is. Every or tutor of Phil's is getting a, getting uh, yeah. a Risen Reef. That's that's yeah. always the example. Oh, yeah, wait for my next cut. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I play Rocco just because I have it laying around, and I thought, well, that's a cool budget tutor, and I... Yeah, I that's just such a good cut. I don't even have synergies with it. I just want Risen Reefs. <laughs> Yeah. Again, the I the, guess the, uh, the only drawback again is these are both three color cards. Same with Wargate. Like that's not a 
a drawback really but it does just limit the number of decks you can play it in because of the color identity rules so you can't jam it in any deck but if you're in the back colors or four color or five color you should probably just play wargate right yeah i i i put it in as an auto clue in any deck that can run it but then again like you said it, it is three color so for it that does severely limit what decks you can run it in um but if you are in those colors i highly recommend getting wargate and if you're in, in naya and you like creatures uh rocco those are those are really good this this means nothing to Krim because he will refuse to play. It, it has neither black There's green mana. And it has green and in it's there. a sorcery. Naya is the farthest <laughs> color from whatever I would play. I would never play this. Like, I would never play this. This is Bant, though. Wargate's Bant. But, but Rocco. Wargate's Bant. Rocco, I, I will... I, it's great. It's great. <laughs> You'll play Bant? It has green in it, though. It has blue, though. Okay, so it white. balances out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But Rocco but, has but nothing Rocco, to be like. like that doesn't even make sense to me. I'm just like short circuiting. <laughs> what do you mean it doesn't have blue or black? It that's has red. Weird. That's that's Grixis, right? Yeah, but that's like that's like I'm not gonna lie to you. If like if there was a color I had a trim, you know. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> I can see from the hair color. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. Seth, what do you got for number three? Ooh, so I actually have a a mechanic, but there's only three cards in the uh, in this mechanic, and this is about as narrow as a tutor can get. So we've been talking about flexible tutors that can get anything. These are tutors that can only get very, very specific things. But if you are trying to get those things, they're actually pretty efficient. So this is the type cycling mechanic. And there's three cards in Magic that have this mechanic. Uh, one of them is homing sliver a three mana two two sliver the home that has sliver. <laughs> sliver cycling of three so you can discard it and for three mana and cycle a sliver from your deck into your hand and if it's on the battlefield it also gives all slivers sliver cycling of three so if you draw a bad sliver you can turn it into a good sliver and then there's two cards that do this for wizards they have wizard cycling uh the delkin ether mage has wizard cycling of three it's got other text on it but it's really bad it's a one two for four Flash that when it comes into play, it bounces a sliver to its owner's hand, which is like the most narrow hey, ability hey. in the history of magic. We're ready for the return of yeah, slivers. Yeah, that, that's we, what we're it's prepared. Saying. And then uh, <laughs> step through five mana, bounce two creatures to its owner's hands at sorcery speed, or wizard cycle for two. So obviously, you got to be wizards or you got to be slivers. But if you're playing a wizard tribal deck or a sliver tribal deck, these cards are basically free. Like uh, the most expensive one is Ether Mage at forty nine cents. Step through. Is 24 cents homing slivers 42 cents so there is bulk as bulk can get and they're pretty efficient when you consider that demonic tutor is two mana to snag what you want if you're playing a wizard deck and you're always going to be wanting a wizard step through is essentially the same amount of mana and you can do it at instant speed because it's cycling so you don't have any timing restriction and you can snag whatever wizards you want so i think these cards are obviously very narrow because you got to be in the right tribe but in those tribes i think they're very underrated and very good they're they're instant speed tutors for any of your tribe members at an efficient price Buster, yeah. I, I i i love these i love these cards yeah i i mean i don't think i've ever actually casted a vidalcan oh they're horrible you don't you don't want to cast any of these cards <laughs> yeah, really. yeah. Maybe, maybe homing sliver would be okay if you have a bunch of slivers in hand but really you play them as, as tutors like you're, you're playing them as three mana tutor or two mana tutor not the actual effect on the card yeah like that that's why i just find it funny like i i'm not gonna lie to you i have the delkin ether mage in my decks in some of my decks but i actually did not know that it did something other than i was gonna that. ask did you ever actually <laughs> bounce a sliver there's gonna be like one out of every like thousand games you're gonna bounce a first sliver or something that's attacking you for lethal and it's gonna be like the greatest moment in the history of commander <laughs> you just you know it, it will because i won't even know that it's on there and i'll probably have misclicked and dropped it on the field you know what i mean when i tried to cycle it and like wait this does that because I seriously did not know about that until right now, and I've had that card in my deck for years, <laughs> dude. <laughs> years. Oh my god. What? Today I learned. Oh my god. And yeah, these are easy slam dunks. Like the fact that it's instant speed. If it wasn't instant speed, I'd be like, eh, you know, it's good on a budget. But like, you're on the right tribe, so you have a lot of targets for this. And you could do that at instant speed, so you can see whatever your opponents have done, use that knowledge to grab the best card, and you know hold up whatever answers at the same time. Yeah, it's perfect. 
And I think it's especially good with wizards because wizards have a lot of flash effects. So being able to get something at yep. instant speed is especially valuable if you're grabbing like a Venser or something like that, uh, an even mind sensor that can just wreck someone by surprise once you see what your opponent's doing. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's get another another green card, Phil. How, how we find in Risen Reef this time, Phil? <laughs> yeah, what, what's the new Risen Reef tutor attack here, Phil? So yeah, this one gets very narrow, but it's pretty good if you want uh, a yeah. Risen Reef or Tyler, huh? maybe an wow. Eternal Witness. It's oh. Woodland Bellowa, six yep. mana. 6-5. When Woodland Bellower enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a non-legendary green creature with converted mana cost 3 or less, put it on the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. Um, it's an ETB onto the battlefield tutor, and while it's very limited, I mean, I just named three of the greatest creatures in Magic, so you can get those, but usually I get time, uh, Tyler's, uh, oh yeah, Tyler's Tracker, or Eternal Witness later in the game to get something back. It's just such a fun and solid card. I don't know what else. It works with Panamonicon. It's not It's not going to win you the game out of nowhere as other tutors, but that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get value. And this one, ooh. Now here's the, oh, my. imagine this. You minus a Vivian. Play this, get a five drop. It's a Yarok. <laughs> and then you get like Risen Reef, everything. Oh, it's no, it's le- non legendary. Never <laughs> mind. Don't get the Yarrow. Uh, you will get disqualified. Get, <laughs> I don't know, Greater Gargoroth and <laughs> run down your opponents. I don't know. But the card just plays super solid. Every time I cast it, I think, love it. <laughs> Too bad it's not on Arena. I mean, it is, it is an know. Enter the Battlefield trigger, so Blink Effects make it just really good. And like, like, like I said, it's is six mana. It's expensive, but it also puts it directly onto the battlefield. So Ooh, I don't know. Also, and it's a six five. Just, so you're, yeah, you're getting you can three get mana because you get you get it with Vivian. Sorry. So you're getting so you three can. mana back essentially. So you're you're yeah, getting nine mana like worth of spells. Yeah, but you're getting three of another creature on the battlefield. And there's a lot of good non legendary green three drops. A course or a crew fix, tireless tracker, risen reef, eternal witness, realm walker is one that's good in some decks. Champion of Lamhole can be pretty good. There's ramp like spring bloom do it. There's proliferate like evolution sage. So almost you no matter rex sage, rex, rex, rex up, sage yeah. to blow. Or yeah, knight of autumn if you're in multicolor. So I think almost no matter what style a deck you're going to play there's probably a, a very powerful three drop for your deck in situation like even outside of like the dream of getting the risen reefs and just going to value town which is definitely like spectacular but even outside of that it's it seems like a really good card that people probably underrate a little bit uh, yeah i think yeah. woodland Beller is actually a pretty uh like powerful card uh i i i don't know i mean i've seen it played a few times in commander and it's always been nice like it it's never been a bad card yeah I think for me, like, the key thing would be, is there something really important that my deck wants at th- this can tutor? And then are there other utility stuff, too? Like, being able to get, like, a Rex Age or whatever, it's fine, but, like, that's not that's not enough for me to be interested in running it. However, if, like, I'm in a deck that really wants Risen Reef on the battlefield, then, yeah, this is going to be perfect for it. And then the fact that it gets other things, too, is going to be great utility. So I think that's, like, the major thing for me. Yeah. If I want to run it, it has to be, like, a primary target that I really, really want to have consistently every single game. And then from there, if I can get other stuff as well, then we'll land Bell over is just, like, super gas. Yeah, I think that's the right way to play it. You have, you have one thing that you mostly want to get, and then you get some flexibility as an upside, basically. Yeah, because it is pretty narrow, but... I mean, if you if that narrowness doesn't affect you, if you want that card anyway, <laughs> then it's all upside. Um, all right. Uh, Krim, what are you trying to ignite right now? <laughs> uh, I, I, okay, so then and the next card I have is Ignite the Bacon. Uh, the bacon? Where, yeah, yeah. Ignite the Bacon, which is definitely not its real name. It's Ignite the Beacon, but I call it Bacon anyways. It's four and a white instant speed. Search your library for up to two Planeswalker cards. Reveal them and put them into your hand. So, obviously, as someone who loves his Planeswalkers and Super Friends decks... 
this is the best thing to do, right? Because a lot of planeswalkers can be pretty situational, so it's best to get full information again of what the table's doing, and then going that should assessing that will then determine which planeswalker to get. Although let's not lie, usually one of them is always Ugin. So uh, <laughs> like, I just because Ugin is like the best big emergency oh oh crap red button, right? Like, uh, p- table's going a little too wild. Let's just exile everything, right? Like, you know what I mean? So I oh don't don't shake your head. <laughs> At me. <laughs> this is how you stop the eternal witness loops, all right? <laughs> they never come back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like, the, the, this card is a, very specific. It is just for planeswalkers. But, yeah. um, like, something that isn't as narrow as planeswalkers that I originally wanted to also bring up was Mausoleum Secrets. Uh, I think that card is a sweet one and often kind of forgotten, I think. Uh, it's just one in a black Mausoleum Secrets is an inter- uh, instant spell. I know. Surprise. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> Undergrowth. Search your library for a black card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. I, I love this card. Instant speed. Two mana. Tutor whatever. Black has no issues. Uh, sacrificing tons of its own creatures. Filling up its own yard. Uh, I get to tutor equal to, the, uh, equal to or less than. Uh, that's just... That's all I could ask for, right? And it's instant speed? Come on. That's great. Yeah, I mean, it's dependent on, like, having your graveyard, like, uh, uh, still be there, which in Commander can be a little uh, suspect at times. But so far, like, this has been pretty good. I, I've enjoyed it in my mono black deck uh, a decent amount of time. Actually, almost every time I've casted it. It's only a dollar, so it's pretty cheap. I feel like Mausoleum Seekers for me is a card that it seems really good, but only... I think I'd have to be a graveyard deck to really want it. Like, if I was playing yeah. that Iname deck that you played, Tomer, where you're like, hey, play my commander, I put a whole bunch of spirits in my graveyard, this is probably really good in that deck. Or, like, Hakan or, like, Azoni is actually just, like, an undergrowth commander. Like, it actually has a mechanic on it. In a deck like that, I think it's really good. I think if you don't build around the graveyard, it's probably not going to be good enough. What decks do you play it in, Krim? I'm curious. Do you play it in decks that are like graveyard centric, or do you just kind of YOLO it in whatever black deck and it works out? I have it in three decks. So I have it in my zombies deck. Surprise. Okay. Uh, and then I have it in my <laughs> mono black Kyrick demons deck. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. <laughs> and then, uh, like, because most of the time, and then of course I have it just in my uh, like my my uh, like aristocraty deck, right? Okay. Uh, all, all all very creature based decks, right? Mm-hmm. But the, there are the decks like my demon deck isn't exactly low on the curve, but I think a lot of what like what black does or anything with black in it naturally fills its own yard up. So I guess I don't really mind. Like, but I every deck that I have it in is a very much so a creature centric deck. Uh, but because black's in it, I often find myself just filling up my graveyard that's why i and if it's tribal i probably have like haunted voyage or whatever right and it's because black decks love throwing away creatures yeah i mean i think if you get enough creatures enough graveyard stuff it seems like it's pretty good yeah it's 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 not hard it's I, i i guess like if i'm trying to tutor on two uh like that is that it's not exactly good right like but i don't know No, it's not an early game tutor for sure yeah so, I, I don't know. I mean, but usually most of the time I tutor, I'm using it mid-game to late-game anyways, if I am going to tutor. So, that's why I don't mind. Like, it, it matches my play style a little bit more, maybe. That's why. Uh, because mm-hmm. at the midpoint or the late-game is when I know what I need. So, I what mean, do it, you usually get with it? It could... So, it, it really could be anything. It could be a sweeper. Uh, Toxic Deluge only being three mana is, like, obviously yeah, great. Yeah, uh, but but like yeah like there's there's a little bit of everything right or revel in riches uh, if I need so this way that I know that I can just like start I'm ready to turn on the ga- the gas here you know what I'm saying <laughs> revel in riches yeah. so like it it really is just whatever as most tutors are but like at the best point for a tutor I think in my opinion is in mid game or late game and this is when this card goes live anyways but what if I play planner void on turn one cram hmm. That, well, then I concede. I could seed. I, 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 I cannot well, beat. I cannot beat. <laughs> you can always cast this and get Profane Tutor, which is Ooh, zero cost. Yeah, yeah, get a real, yeah, get a real tutor. Tutor oh. for a tutor. Oh. And then you Profane Tutor for a, 
Then you profane tutor, tutor for for night stealings, and the circle <laughs> of life is complete. <laughs> you know, I could well, actually at instant speed, I could do whatever I want, Seth. Like I can go grab feed the swarm. That's another target I often get. <laughs> yeah, I I like this, but I have to be like black heavy and a graveyard deck. That's yeah. that's my criteria. Like Iname, like Seth, you said, like it's one of the best tutors in Iname. I have it in my Vol Rat deck. I have it in a lot of decks. Um, just, I guess not to Shiro because it's too many, too few creatures. But right, I don't but, know. I mean, like it's good car- and it's instant and it's cheap. It's legitimate. It's cheap. Uh, obviously, the black. It's hard because in black, a lot of tutors have to compete with like you know vampiric tutor, demonic tutor, like just like the tutors, right? Of the for- like the, the format. But when you start looking around like tutors, like. I guess with black, actually, it runs pretty deep. I think this is like tutor number five or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Because black just has so many good tutors. However, this one is better in some cases if you are a graveyard deck, like we had mentioned. So uh, for the most part, though, on average, I could see why this is still a dollar just because it's got to compete with so many other tutors. I might put it into Shiro, actually. You might have convinced me. It is an instant. That sounds sexy. Instant is creatures. nice. I, I love instant speed. Hey, you, if you didn't yeah. know this by now, every one of <laughs> yeah, my yeah. tutors are all instants. There's, the, a, there's a theme here. <laughs> night dealings is like four mana to instantly do things. Yes. And I, it makes sense. Tutors are best when you have the most information right. to work with on what you want a tutor. So it makes sense. Um. Well, I'm going to throw in a sorcery that, oh. yes, it is not an instant, but... <laughs> I think it's good enough that it's it's warrant uh, a thing. And uh, this one is a white one called Search for Glory. Two and a white snow sorcery. Ooh la la from Cal Time. Um, search your library for a snow permanent card, a legendary card, or a saga card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. You gain one life for each snow mana spent to cast a spell. Um, it's currently under a dollar. It's a dollar seventy-five. Or sorry, it's a... Uh, 75 cents it's under a dollar it's 75 cents and um the flexibility here is kind of off the chain like i think if this card was printed like a decade ago uh it would be it's really i'm trying to appeal to the youngins all right so the phil generation okay gnarly dude i'm almost (laughs) tober's using words from a decade ago flavor (laughs) to reinforce that his theme it is the bee's knees it is the flap of jacks all right it is (laughs) all the cool kids are doing it all right that's illmatic bro (laughs) that is sick all right, but the, the, the main point is, a decade ago, this would be not great because how many legendary cards would you have? Very few. How many snow permanents would you have? Very few. How many sagas? They didn't even weren't existed yet a decade ago. But now, now basically every set, every other set is getting new sagas. We are in the decade of commander, so like every single set has to have like 150 new legendaries. And this this doesn't just get legendary creatures, it gets any legendary. So legendary land, legendary artifact, the legendary enchantments, all the planeswalkers, whatever. The meatball massacre. The meatball (laughs) massacre. You get whatever you want, um, and you can get a snow permanent card. You can gain three life if you cast snow-covered mana with it, which is, it's fine, but, like, you could ignore that piece of text and still have a really good value out of it. What I like doing is I like throwing it into basically every deck now because i have i just generally have enough legend like if i even have like 10 10 targets for this like is this going to be very good um and then i always throw in like one snow basic land because sometimes i want to cast search for glory it's turn four and i'm missing a land drop i can search for glory for my snow land and put that onto the battlefield and then boom i didn't miss a land drop but or yeah i think this card is pretty life. You can't. <laughs> and or or yeah, and yeah, I mean, you, if you have snow basics, here's another reason why you should have because you can gain some, some life off that. That's pretty neat. Neato. This card's um, so good. Like it's search pretty for whack. Is, search for glory is great. If you think about modern magic design, 
everything's a legend. Just look at Dominaire United, every other card that they print, all the way down to the uncommons or a legend. So hitting any legend is already super flexible. And then Wizards also keeps printing more and more sagas. That's another thing they're printing a ton of these days. Worst case, snow permanence, I guess you grab a land, which isn't the end of the world. Sometimes you demonic tutor for a land. So it's a nice upside to have if you get stuck on mana. So yeah, I think this card, even without the life gain and even without any snow synergies, is just worth running in like a lot of decks at this point. It's Obviously, great. Legendary Tribal is probably... Is that probably its best home if you're some sort of Legendary Tribal deck, like New Joda or okay. whatever, Azika or something like that? This is probably an all-star. Oh, okay. yeah. Legendary Tribal, this is absolutely busted. But yeah, this is just a very good white tutor, right? Like, it is just three mana get a card in 2022. Yeah. Every every year that goes by, we it becomes less of a specific restricted tutor and just becomes... A grim tutor that gains you life instead of loses you three life. Yeah. Essentially. <laughs> All right. Final round of cards. Take it away, Seth. What do you got for us? So I, I got a dark horse that I feel like is a little bit underrated, which is Coveted Prize. Uh, coveted Prize, it's 40, 42 cents, something like that. It's about as cheap as a rare gets. It's a five mana sorcery. It costs one less to cast for each creature in your party. So if you have a cleric, a rogue, a warrior, a wizard, one mana less for each of those, you just search your library for a card, put it in your hand, shuffle your library, and then if you have a full party, so you have all of those card types, you get to play a spell with mana value four less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So Covenant Prize, obviously, if you're a party deck, this is amazing. It can be one mana Demonic Tutor and cast something mana value you four or less from your hand for free. And we've seen Wizards supporting party a little bit more lately. We just got a pre-con build around the party mechanic uh, with... Uh, Streets of New Capenna? Was it the was it those pre-cons that had the white black? No, no Baldur's, Baldur's Gate. Gate. Baldur's Gate, Baldur's uh, Gate. yeah. But we're getting more and more... Nalia, I think? Yeah, right. and that card's actually really good. So we're getting more and more support uh, support for party. But the way I think of tutors is the baseline for a budget tutor and commander is probably Diabolic Tutor. Four, black, man, four mana in black, sorcery speed, put a card in your hand. That's kind of like the, the pre-con tutor or whatever. If you're worse than that, you're probably bad. If you're better than that, you're probably like heading in the right direction to be good. I don't think it's that hard to make this into a into a diabolic tutor. Like, all you need is any rogue, cleric, warrior, or wizard. So if you get it down to four mana, it's like a passable budget tutor. If you get it down to three mana, then you're in the grim tutor without losing life range. So even if we only have yeah. two of those types, it's good. And if this is ever two or one mana, then it's like demonic tutor or like the best tutor in the history of magic if you're an actual party deck. So I think if you have some changelings in your deck or if you just have enough of the party tribes in your deck to get this down in the three mana range, Considering how cheap it is, this is actually like a pretty effective tutor. If you're getting it for five mana, it's obviously not great if you have no creatures on the battlefield. So there are some consistency issues, but I think people get locked into a little bit too much of thinking of this as only a party tribal deck. Like if I'm playing a party deck, I can play Coveted Prize. If I'm not built around party, then I can't play this. But I think if you have two of those tribes in your deck relatively heavily supported, then this is going to be one of the best budget tutors you can play behind like night yeah. dealings for sure <laughs> <laughs> except for, for night sure. dealings mm. <clears throat> i thought that best. this card exists actually but now that they printed more party support it might be worth taking another look at it i mean you really gotta check your deck before you just run this willy-nilly but some decks might just get there i mean changelings yeah but i Change mean party I mean tribes are pretty common creature types yeah, you got, like, yep. uh, Selfless Spirits, a cleric, Mangara's a cleric, Remorseful uh, Clerics, a cleric, obviously, uh, Wizards, you got Vencers, uh, you have Thieving Skydiver as a rogue, which should be, like, we've talked about that maybe being a staple level card that we should play more often. So I think, like, some decks, if you look at your creature types, you might accidentally be like, wow, I accidentally have, like, most of a party in here. Maybe I could play Coveted Prize in this deck. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be that difficult to actually pull this off these days. Like, especially now, now that like party is a thing, I imagine they kind of support it a little bit more with those those creature types. And like like Seth said, like you don't have to go all in on party. Like if you cast this for three mana, it's already a better Grim Tutor. That's all you really need. 
And they just made black market connections, which is, like, so good. And that makes changeling tokens and helps you get your party. So there's yeah. more and more cards that Wizards are printing that, like, sneakily ups your party count. So I think this is a card, even if it's not good enough now, keep an eye on this one. Because, like, a couple of years from now, if they keep designing and printing cards like they have been for the last year, I think it's actually going to be, like, a really good tutoring commander. I mean, you, you can safely assume this won't be the last time we'll see a wizard, like, a magic D&D, like, crossover. So... Yeah. <laughs> maybe 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 I the mean, Lord of the Rings is coming out really soon. We know Gandalf's gonna be a wizard. That's gonna right? be a wizard, like, yeah. There's probably some Aragorn. warriors in there. Yeah. I don't think Rangers are actually a thing really in, in command in magic yet. Like there's a Ranger class, but are there any Ranger creatures? I think Aragorn's gonna be a warrior probably. Oh mm-hmm. Ranger the Hobbits. Hobbits could be rogues. Also yeah. known as easy mode. What? Ranger I... class, also known as easy mode. <laughs> Oh, there are, uh, are actually rangers. Oops. Oh, he's going to be a ranger. Huh. I just assumed they'd be scouts if they don't have rangers. It seems like a close thing. But, uh, yeah, I guess we get more Lord of the Rings or something. Heck yeah. Hell well, any, se- yeah. any second we'll have wizards. Like, this one of the most They're- common... They're types. pretty popular tribes. Like warriors yeah. also shows up in a lot of yeah. uh, a lot of sets. Like rogues, clerics also are tacked onto creatures. So you accidentally get some support for the the party tribes. Yeah, check your deck if you have if you think you have enough to cast this as a grim tutor or more. Uh, it's really good. Don't, yeah. don't sleep on this. Or of course, travel, travel if you're travel. travel. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, if you're a shapeshifter yeah. deck or like scarecrows with quotes around it, like this is yeah, really yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> all right moving on phil what do you got for us so i got i mean you see me finding or showing you ways to tutor up uh tireless tracker or risen reef how about you get both <laughs> with shared summons it's a five mana <laughs> instant that says search your library for up to two creature cards with different names not a problem in commander reveal them and put them into your hand then shuffle so while i this kind of falls instant into the... Instant speed, by the it's way? It's instant speed, yeah. Uh, I like that. I like that. Yeah, it's a tutor with mm-hmm. card advantage built in, which is pretty sweet, and usually I would... I guess I'd tutor for a creature anyways, so it's <laughs> very close to being like, oh, this is might be a bit boring. Uh, but this gets two creatures. You can get, like, Kiki Jiki Pestamite or something. It's like... Mm-hmm. It's three dollar sixty cents right now. You can pay more if you want to, uh, but this seems... you can pay more if you want. Yeah, there's <laughs> yeah. different versions that cost more, obviously. But <laughs> it's not too expensive. It's got Vivian in the in the text box as well. Hey, buddy, well, I'll sell you this for five hundred dollars. Um, yeah, it's just a. The funny thing is, I usually the most time I played this card was uh, against Sparky. Whenever I try out synergies or something that involve creatures, I play shared summons to tutor them up against Sparky and test them out. I don't think I've played it in Commander yet, but I might try it out if I play a deck that is creature focused, which I like to play anyways. Um, it just seems very, very good, and it's instant speed, so nobody can really punish you after you tutor and you can just huh untap and play your yeah, stuff yeah i'm gonna try I, it out i think this is also just like a great combo assembler like uh, get your team or saber tooth in your dock side get your kiki jiki fester money like the ability to get two creatures for value is awesome get your risen reef and your whatever your <laughs> phyrexian metamorph to copy your risen reef and really yes. go to value town but but also like if you're playing a deck that has two card creature combos this is like one of the best ways to assemble them i think because you can wait until your opponent's end step when people are tapped out and then just get them by surprise untap combo off win the game it's yeah, almost too on the nose for t- creature combos. Like I yeah, think if is... they reprint it, they might sneak in a little art reference, like putting on Kiki Jiki or something on there, because yeah. this is just hey, you get yeah. your combo. Yeah, I definitely view this as the the combo tutor. Like I don't know if I'd spend five mana outside of Drago again for just like tutoring up any random creatures, but this is just ideal, right? Like you have a two card mm-hmm. combo. You wait until your opponents, and you wait until the end step before your turn. You knock that out, and then you have a full turn 
all your mana available to, to do whatever. Oof. Yep. That is that is spicy. I won't um, lie. The, this the one of my favorite memories of shared summons was opposition agenting this. Oh my oh. god! That, oh, I bet <laughs> that that, yeah. that felt Ooh. so good. <laughs> <laughs> that felt that, that, so good. Uh, unlucky victim. Yeah, it's, is it the only tutor that gets like multiple cards at once? There's some black sorcery speed ones that are like pay uh, like so much an X, and you tutor up that many cards. I can't remember what's the name of that one. Diabolic Revelation, maybe? Is that the? Oh yeah, yeah. It yeah, costs yeah. like a bajillion mana. Yeah. It is very like expensive. Conflux. Gets you Ooh, conflux cards. Right, yeah. This might be the yeah. only one at instant speed. Three dreams. I think that yeah, might be the, just super, the upside. Super clean. This instant speed five mana is fine and green. I might try I, it out. Although I'm not too big of a fan of this kind of tutor, but this is on the line where it becomes like, oh, this is too easy, like a demonic tutor. But at least it's five mana, so I guess I can live with it. Reads. I, I used to be re- passes <clears throat> check. I used I to play the conflict speed. so much. I used to play Conflux so much, and I learned that it's so bad because people just murder you. You cast Conflux yeah. and tutor, oh, up, yeah. tutor up all the cards, and everyone's like, well, you got to kill him because he's going to untap. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I, Shared Summons is way better, though, because you can do it at instant speed. So your opponents don't have that turn cycle to kill you before you use the card. So I think that's what yeah. makes it so much better. Yeah. The combo tutor that you never knew existed. <laughs> all right. Krim, what do you got for us? So I actually have uh, a mixture here of two green cards. Um, they aren't oh, instant geez, speed. Uh, they're, they're, they're not instant speed. Again, I will repeat. And it is one mana. Uh, I really like Dig Up as of recent. Uh, it's just one green. Uh, search your library for a basic land card and reveal it. Put it into your hand, then shuffle. Cleave. Remove all the bracket text. So essentially just get whatever, right? So you use... <laughs> Pay one black, black, green, you get whatever. Pay a green, you get a, a, a basic land. Uh, but, th- like, that that's a pretty good one, and it's, like, absurdly cheap right now. It's, like, a dollar. Uh, one that's kind of, like, climbing up there that I, I personally played with back when I was in Standard as well was uh, Traverse the Olvenwald. I think this one is an amazing card for one mana, and hitting Delirium isn't that hard, like, when I, when, like, back... When I think about it, like Delirium is not that hard to hit in Commander, just naturally. So one mana, I can get a basic land card. Or if I have Delirium, I get to look through my deck for a creature card. So I love these cards. These are both one mana. So very mana efficient, allowing me to still like have access to more things to do the following turn. And funny enough, I, I actually, when I play green, I don't need to tutor for a land because I naturally just somehow have a surplus of riches anyways. Hmm. I like Dig Up a lot. I think Dig Up is should be kind of like a Golgari staple. The upside of being able to get a land early and then have a, a Diabolic Tutor, the baseline for a budget tutor at four mana later, I think is really good. Traverse I also like, but I feel like it's... Yeah, you need a specific deck again, in my opinion. Like, I think you also got to be in some sort of, like, graveyard Self-mail. deck. And even then, you got to be, like have a mixture of card types uh, to make sure that you can actually turn it on because if you don't have a realistic shot of being able to get a creature or any land with it and you can only get basics then it's not very exciting mm-hmm. if it's just a lay of the land most of the time in your deck so I think in the right deck though if you're a self mill Golgari style deck then I think it's in the, the conversation I also like that Dig Up can get any card it turns into just like a full on diabolic tutor when even if Traverse is fully turned on you can't grab your wrath with it or whatever like that's a little bit sure. not that that makes it bad but there's a little bit of a restriction there i don't know i mean like there's a lot you can get with just a creature though right i mean you can get like bane a progress which is a wrath in its own sense right you can get uh uh if you play the cacophony the caca demon reaver demon uh, or whatever yeah there's 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 lots of options there and if you're in golgari like it's not actually that hard i tell like over a game people will again just blow stuff up i i I think maybe the reason why i look at this card isn't a pretty solid tutor. It's just because I think tutors at the most part, uh, for the most part, just get played around the mid game to late game. And by then your stuff will have probably blown up or you've already won anyways. Right. So you'll have delirium. Yeah. Although yeah. delirium is a bit harder to hit than the four mana of cleave. So I think in 
Right. Um, no, uh, I agree. Uh, yeah. I agree. I just but... think uh, pretty fondly of Traverse the Open World because of standard and modern back in the day. Like, yeah. Uh, like the Death Shadow and Tarmogoyfs. Ooh, those were the days. Sultai, Death Grim, Shadow. Uh, whatever, the, the Grim Mythic card. Is it yeah, Grim, uh, yeah, Grim, Grim Slayer. Uh, Grim Slayer, there it is. That card, yeah, I, I, I even... Oh, this that works was... pretty well with it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played, I played a lot of that standard. That standard was really fun. Oh. So, I my hot take is I don't actually like Dig Up because I don't think Diabolic <laughs> Tutor is worth it nine times out of ten. <laughs> but wow. you can I get I think paying four mana for a sorcery speed, any tutor, I, th- I just... Well, you could pay one for Sorcerer Library for any lane card... And that's not great. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a basic land, right? It's just a basic land. And then you could pay four mana for a Diabolic Tutor, which, again, I just don't think is is good enough anymore. Like, I used to have it in my budget Bruce, and I just took them out of my budget Bruce. Like, if you are looking for specific cards, I started finding other versions, like the other stuff on our list. So I just don't like either mode. Even if it's flexible. I, I like that it's flexible, but I just don't like other men. Traverse the Uven World I do like, though. I like one mana for my, my creature tutor. It does require a very specific deck. You need to be in a self mill deck, I think. Like, I wouldn't just jam it into any deck and play it late. But, you know, one mana. Switch your library for a creature. It's very enticing, and I'm willing to jump through hoops. And then, yes, you could you could search for basic land or whatever. It's fine. Mm. Being able to get non basic if you turn it on it is an upside though. Like late game getting yeah. your field of the dead yeah. or something. Like then that, that's actually like that's a real card. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't like spending four mana for Diabolic Tutor and I don't really like spending that's, one mana for I mean, a maybe, basic land. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's just been power crept. Maybe I need to stop thinking of, of Diabolic Tutor as the baseline for like passable tutors. Like maybe that was like magic of ten years ago and it's not good enough anymore. Hmm. If it was instant though <laughs> if it was <laughs> night dealings and you could do it tw- <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, diabolic tutors oh, then, it's, <laughs> then it's a good card <laughs> but you could do it instant speed and whenever night dealings is so Hell good yeah. team night dealings <laughs> night dealings is so good but I also like dig up so you know whatever ah. <laughs> I feel like every single time Crib suggests a green card I'm not for sure if he's like he wants people to play so you can just destroy people <laughs> or he's yeah. being honest. Yeah, Crim's gonna be packing the Leyline of the Voids the next few commander clashes to get us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. cool. I'm now Ada. What an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> they listened to me, got him. <laughs> <laughs> Creating my own metagame. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to round things out. I'm going to cheat a little bit to just throw in my honorable mention because, oh boy, did I have a lot of options. I'm not even going to say what they do or anything. But Trinket, Trophy, Tribute, Mage, Signal of Clans, Fierce Empath, Guided Passage, Jared's Orders, or Gerard's Orders, I don't know, Mythos of Brakos, um, an entire transmute cycle with special shout out to Demir House Guard. But the last card that I think is super, super awesome um, that I'm going to say is my fourth pick is Wur of Invention. Is it Wur of Invention or Weir Invention? I think, I think it's, it's Wur. Yeah, it's I'm Wur. pretty. Wur. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, comment section. If I got wrong, it's blame <laughs> Seth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> two two seventy five for a X triple blue instant with improvise which means your artifacts can help cast a spell each artifact you tap after you're done activating mana abilities pays for one so unlike convoke you can't pay for the blue ever you're it's always going to be triple blue but that x you can help pay for with uh tapping uh your artifacts search your library for an artifact card mana value x or less put it onto the battlefield then shuffle so what i like about this again it's mana efficient ish you have to pay three mana always but then whatever you get after that, uh, whatever extra mana you spend, it's it's basically just paying for the, the artifact that goes directly onto the battlefield. And it's instant speed, which is not only cool because I like instant speed tutors, but also it kind of gets around timing restrictions because generally speaking, you can only put artifacts onto the battlefield at sorcery speed. Uh, so you can now just jam your, your thing at instant speed, which 
makes it a lot more flexible. Like your meteor golem, you can, and you have enough mana, you can uh, just jam a meteor golem and blow something up at instant speed. If you're running like an Avindral's disc, which enters the battlefield tapped, you can do that at the instant before your turn, untap it, blow up everything. So I like the flexibility there. Yes, it's only artifacts. However, I think there's enough artifacts in most blue decks that you're probably going to be gaining, like, at least at one, you'll be getting your Soul Ring, you'll be getting your Soul Guide Lantern if you need that. Um, and then at two, you can get any of the Mana Rocks, but you can get, like, any other utility stuff, like your Strionic Resonator or whatever, like that. So much like uh, other tutors, I want to have, like, at least one artifact that I really, really want in that deck to tutor up. Ideally, like, one, two, three drop. And then anything else is just extra bonus. But the fact that it's super mana efficient and instant speed and gets around timing restrictions, I think has a lot of a value outside of just your generic artifact decks, which I think it's a staple for. Yeah. We're, we're is great. We're is, we're is very, very good, uh, especially now because there's so much focus on treasure tokens and blood tokens. Like, Wizards has Blues. really pushed these, like, let's just put artifact to- you relatively useless artifact tokens on the battlefield. Like, let's just let everyone make tons of those. And War really takes advantage of that, like, for reducing the cost. And as you said, there's so many artifacts that RDC play, like, between Soul Ring, getting your boots on two. I don't know what you get on. What's the best three? A sword or something? I guess another mana rock. You get a Celestis or some random mana rock that you want. And then you can get your specific combo pieces. If you're an actual artifact deck, Mystic Forge might be like the best card in your deck. That might be like, I need to get this on the battlefield and that's my way to win the game. Or like Bolus's <laughs> Citadel, at Darksteel Forge. Oh, like, so uh, there's like I so many Citadel. bootlegger wow. stash. There's so many Isochron <laughs> Scepter to combo with. Like, there's so many good artifacts that can win you the game that I feel like this card's like totally worth it. I chuckle when you bring up the, the whatever, the, the four mana artifact because uh, I just still think form. about. I still think about it's just the pizza oven. That's just what I, I like. It looks like a pizza oven every time. Well, if you need the cat oven combo, boom, you can get the oven that way. You actually could. Okay, I, I do think War of Invention is a banger of a card because, again, it's instant speed. And, yes, like Seth had mentioned, over time, artifacts just kind of, like, poop itself onto the board. And so it's pretty right. easy for you to just get there. And lastly, because I speculated on this card and I have 200 copies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Hashtag not financial. Yeah, advice. Yeah, hash, yeah, seriously. Clearly I failed. So, because uh, I, I mean, I might, my, like, literally a box. You want one? <laughs> I might lot. buy one, actually. Like, thinking about it, I play Lonis and she makes a lot of. You don't need to buy one. You don't need to buy one. You don't need to buy one. Perfect. If she Vegas, makes a little, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just give you one. <laughs> Yeah. Leave a comment down below if you want to get one, and Kroom will be obligated to send it to you. No, but you can, like, Lonis easily makes, like, three clues, and then I can end step get an Academy Manufacturer oh. or, like, oh. Inspiring Stack Tree, yeah. Yeah. and then I just win next turn. So yeah. this might actually be a legit good inclusion. It, it hurts to cut a creature from the deck for an instant, but... Man, yeah, but would you rather that that solid. creature be manufactured slash inspiring statuary? <laughs> yeah, it seems like I should get my <laughs> hands on this one. This seems very fitting, and I play an historic brawl, but I for some reason I didn't think about the actual commander deck. Man, I gotta get one. Maybe I have one in my folder. I played. I got a lot of paper cards in this set. I think. Huh. Hmm. Are we I also. Might... We also did a podcast recently on Blue Ramp. I'm just saying that uh, we're of invention, pay three mana, put a Dark Steel Citadel onto yeah. the battlefield. That's kind of that's kind of something. That's yeah, that's not good ramp, there's but the, it's, it's a ramp. That's, it, it, that's passable. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's there's colored artifacts too, and there's uh, the dual the dual color artifacts that come into play tapped. I mean, getting just, like one more mana to get your soul rings probably totally worth it and then that's, yeah, that's probably not bad around right. four <laughs> mana to get your soul ring yeah. I, I could deal with that yeah or you really, really want a so ramp good i can get your hedron archive <clears throat> no <laughs> no i can't actually it says that on text if you look at the if you look at the tutor out for an artifact <laughs> except for hedron archive what's, what's, tutor what's up next? hedron archive then burn it and now your deck is better T- tutor up dream power stone on top of that <laughs> yeah throw throw it aside with the dreamscape artist yo hey that's right oh, dude i made comments like <laughs> so man i live off it i live off it yes thank you um but yes um yeah yeah 
Word of invention. Good card. Good for fetching academy manufacturer for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, that's it, everybody. We got 12 budget tutors done in this podcast. Um I guess does anybody want to leave any any comment any 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 last burning tutor that they just want to shout out without going into big discussion on or anything? Or we, we pretty much covered. Um, wait, we got through most. Uh, we got through most. Right, uh, Milmer Vig. I, mean, I was going to shout out. I know it has the same problems as Vivian that you got to untap with it. But if yeah. you do untap with it, Milmer Vig, you cast spells, you put creatures on top, and then you cast other color spells, and you put them in your hand. It's like a super repeatable value tutor if you're in a Simic deck. So it's it, not super consistent. But if you go off with it, it's super fun. That was the first budget commander I ever wrote. By the way, first article I ever really? wrote. Really. I don't budget wow. commander Momer Vig back on pure MTGO days. That's yeah. How long ago was that? How long have you been writing budget, uh, budget commander? Like it's been a I while. Think I was now, right? like, I think I can't even find it. Wait, pure MTGO. I, I want to say, it... oh yeah, tw- September 6, twenty twelve. A decade. Wow. Oh my god, that's almost exactly a decade. Eric <laughs> Tomer's wow. closing in on his ten year his ten year anniversary. Wow. Uh, but yeah, good, uh, I I approve of uh, of shouting out the old Momer because <laughs> he's expensive, but he sure tries and he's good. <laughs> yeah, and cheap yeah. now because because uh, he's expensive and tries hard and isn't actually that strong anymore. I think Aww. he's just the novelty <laughs> card now, right? <laughs> yeah, much. but you play a Risen yeah. Reef and then you. Get to put it direct, uh, put a uh, you know wow. a creature directly on into your hand. I I, I think into your hand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wow, <laughs> that's good, right? Five mana. Yeah, sure. Tutor up repeatable tutor a creature into your hand. That seems sure. Weird. I mean, it is repeatable. Like uh, if you can get it to stick on the battlefield in a Simic deck, it's a uh, Simic creature deck. It is still is strong, but. You do got to get it to stick on the battlefield for a bit, which can be tricky. Yeah, I literally haven't seen it in like eight years. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Um, Pour one I, out for a moment. I, I think for like one last shout out is that yeah. uh, my, my favorite probably like tutor of all time is probably Opposition Agent. So you don't even have to play any of these cards. You can just play Opposition Agent and you can just use everyone else's copies. So all every card mentioned is great when you have an opposition agent. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that's my uh, closing shout out there. Good card, good magic card. They should make more so that we can. Do you use the one that I gifted you, by the way? Uh, I taped it back together. I well, the middle part keeps falling out. So like his face, you can't really see all that <laughs> well. But like it's okay. I'll just like crop my face in there. Like put my baby photo right in the center. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> For those who are listening, I gave uh, Krim a, a ripped up opposition agent as it was a gift great. for Richmond. It was great. Yeah, I actually needed one that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's sleep playable. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was, I apparently brought one, my one of two decks that don't have it. Because <laughs> every single deck has it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does though. I do have a lot. <laughs> nice. All right. I guess that's it. That's twelve plus budget tutors to think about let us know what your favorites are and maybe if there's any sweet ones that we missed out let us know in the comment section we always want to expand our knowledge and i'm sure also the people who are uh you know watching this on youtube or whatever or wherever you're leaving the comment will also appreciate having like a little bit of an expanded uh list so thanks again for watching like and subscribe if you like this sort of stuff and until next time friends see ya